Well, hello and welcome back to Faith, Philosophy and Life with me, Mr. Shelton. It's great that you've joined me again. Um, today we're going to be thinking about objects that are special to us. And behind me is an image uh, of a, a painting that's actually at my house, which my wife drew. Um, she's a very talented artist. And this is a very precious image because it's to do with my family. It was drawn, obviously, a few years back when my kids were still quite young. And I wonder, because obviously we, we hang this on the wall, we look after this, and I wonder what you've got that is precious to you. And if somebody was to come and look at that object, someone was to come and, uh, and to, to, to try and touch or handle it, how would you expect them to do it? Okay, so just think for a moment about something that's special to you and how would you like that to be treated? Okay, so today what we're going to think about is we're going to think about items used in worship and we're going to look at prayer as well from a Jewish perspective. And we're going to think about the way that Jews have things that point to other things. They're symbolic towards parts of their faith. But additionally to that, they respect these objects, these artifacts, um, a lot. And that is what we're going to do. You're going to do a bit of research today and you're going to watch some clips as well today. Okay, so this is the time for you to go and grab a piece of paper and a pen because here's our cheesy intro music. Okay, so welcome back. So our title today is What Helps Jews in Worship? What Helps Jews in Worship? And we've got uh, our learning objective there, which is to know what artifacts are used by Jews to help them worship of God. Okay, to know what artifacts are used by Jews to help them in wor their worship of God. So make sure you've got the title down as usual. Pause this clip uh, wherever we need to. Okay, and these are our outcomes. So it's going to be a good outcome if we can draw and label correctly some of the main artifacts used in Judaism. It's going to be great if you can explain how these objects shape worship of God. And it's going to be even better if you can use some specialist terms and tie these objects into some of the Jewish laws that we've studied as well. So our literacy skill is going to be listening to others. And obviously we're not going to be listening to anyone else, but we can extract information from clips. And we're going to think about a Christian value of gentleness, which is how is it that people approach God and how is it they handle things that are important to other people. So you've got an idea what we're doing. We're going to look at prayer. Then we're going to look at the Amidah. We're going to do a little artifact hunt research thing online. And then there's an exam question for you to look at as well. So to start with then, I'd like you to think about these two questions. Maybe write a response in your book already. What is prayer and how do people pray? Okay, so using your knowledge that you have already, not necessarily about Jewish prayer, but about any form of prayer, what would you define prayer as? And how would you say that people should pray? Pause me now while you do that. Okay, so what I'd like you now to do is to use the link in the description below to access a, a web page that I've screen captured uh, from the BBC. It's an arcade. It's an archive page, um, so it is still available if you just search for Jewish prayer, if you can't get the information up behind me. And there are six questions behind me that I would like you to extract the information from and answer. Um, I'm not going to read those three with you because you can read those uh, very clearly. You don't have to listen to me. So you need to access the uh, BBC web page that I've linked below or this in the description. And then I would like you to answer those questions. So pause me now. This should take you about 10 minutes. Remember, full sentences or write the question out and uh, do short answers, whatever your teacher would normally expect. But I would certainly expect full sentences. You are doing GCSE. Brilliant. So the Amidah then, which is a prayer, which we're going to look at now, 
is all about humbleness before God and acknowledging the power he has over the Jews. Might be worth you making a note of that. The Amadar is all about humbleness before God and acknowledging the power he has over Jews. So my question is this for you just to think about. If you want to write anything down, then please do so. Uh, who or what has authority over you? Who or what has authority over you? So this is the Amadars about being humble before God because God has authority over them. And by authority, I mean power. And by the way, with the other one, prayer then is communication with God. Didn't say that. And how do people pray? Well, there's loads of different ways, aren't there? There's standing, there's sitting, there's lying on the floor, being called prostate. There is um, singing, there's listening to music, there's lighting candles. There, there's tons of ways that people pray to God. And uh, with the Amadar in Judaism is just one of the approaches that Jews might use. And Jews use a heck of a lot of ways to praise God. So, pause this clip, make sure you've got the Amadar down there, the definition. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a clip that I found online. Um, and uh, there's four questions here that I would like you to answer. So you need to write these questions down because they're not going to be on the screen while the clip's there. Um, so the first question is, what is the Amadar? The second one is, how is it said? The third one is, what is prayed about? And the fourth one is, why is it important to Jews? So they're not very long questions. Um, so write them out, leave a couple of lines between each of them and uh, then come back to me. OK, so hopefully now you've got those down um, and I'm now going to show you the clip. So three, two, one, media clip from YouTube, go. <laughs> The Amidah is considered the central prayer in the Jewish tradition. It's considered the time in the prayer service where we are most open spiritually and we're really ready to talk to God. The Amidah is known as a silent prayer. And one of the reasons for the silence is because a person shouldn't be distracted from the conversation that they are having with God. But actually, if you go to a more traditional synagogue during the Amidah, it will not be silent because people will actually be sort of whispering, muttering the prayer to themselves under their breath because we are actually supposed to be in conversation, right? We speak aloud to God and God speaks in God's own way to us. We request the God that we be protected, that we be healthy. But, but when it's Shabbat or holidays, we are offering our gratitude to God. We are grateful for the Sabbath, for instance. We are grateful for God's holiness. The first part of the Amidah is the moment where we reflect on our ancestors, being descendants of Abraham, of Isaac, of Jacob, and of course, in contemporary times, we also say of Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. And because of their merit, and because of the ways that they interacted with God in ancient history, so too may God be gracious to us and protect us and help us live to be our best selves. As we begin the Amidah, we begin by taking three steps backward and then three steps forward as if we are entering God's kingdom. We begin with bowing before God, right? We bend our knees, we bow down um, as we say the words, Baruch Atah, blessed are you. And then we rise up as we say God's name, believing that it is God or God's presence that can somehow lift the fallen. You will often see if you go into a Jewish prayer service, people using their bodies during the Amidah in one of two ways. Either they are moving back and forth wildly, we call that in Yiddish shuckling, right? As if it is a sort of dance that they are doing with God. Or sometimes in some Hasidic traditions, they actually stand stock still. When we say the Kiddushah, we are actually supposed to rise up on our toes like we are angels. It is an embodied prayer. At the end of the Amidah, we take three steps back. We are exiting God's kingdom. We bow to the left, to the right, in front of us as we say this prayer for peace. And then we rise up again on our tiptoes, right? As a way of recognition of all the holiness that we have just been a part of. One of the themes that is um, complicated for a, a lot of Jews who are saying the Amidah is the theme of the resurrection of the dead. But even the idea of Michaye HaMetim, the one who brings the dead back to life, can have meaning even for those of us who don't necessarily believe in the resurrection of the dead. Because we understand this concept of being broken. We're talking about those moments that all of us have experienced of feeling bereft, right? The dark night of the soul, some people will call it. Those are the moments that God can help resurrect us. This prayer that goes back thousands of years 
can be changed and it can also be kept as it is and given new meaning and made eternally meaningful for the Jewish people. Brilliant. Okay, so I hope that uh, you got the answer to that. So the Amidah is the standing prayer. Um, it also can be known as the silent prayer, even though people mutter. Uh, how is it said? Well, then I've just said it, it's done a, a whispering under your breath sort of thing and standing up, turning around. Um, what's prayed about? Well, it's prayed about the nation of Israel. It's prayed about the patriarchs, which are the Jewish founders, which we thought about in the Jewish Chronicles unit. Uh, it, it's prayed about life after death with the Messiah. There's lots and lots of things within that prayer. And why is it important? Because it's foundational to Jewish people's belief. Now you might have some other answers as well, and that's absolutely fine and dandy. So we said then uh, that we'd know which artifacts to use to help Jews them with their worship God. Now we haven't actually really looked at that yet. However, you have seen quite a few of them in the clip you've just seen, which brings us to our artifact hunt. So this is really straightforward. Your task is to create a leaflet, poster or PowerPoint with pictures and information on it. It's really easy because you're meant to copy and paste the pictures, but not the text. If you copy and paste the text, then there's no learning involved. And they always say, don't bother copying because copying is pointless. So this is what I need you to do. You're going to need to put this in a tab. Uh, leave this clip loaded up in the background where you do some research online for the rest of it. So I'd like you to look at a Yad, a Talit, a Tefillin, Yalmulka, also known as a Kippah, not a fish, that should be a Kippah, K-I-A-A-H, a Mezuzah and the Tanakh, which hopefully you've already got some notes on. So uh, you're going to create a PowerPoint or a leaflet or a poster uh, that goes through the questions or the information that I've got there for you to look at. So this is going to take you about 20, 25 minutes or so. So pause this and let's get some research done. Brilliant. So uh, what we've done then today is our learning objective was to know which artifacts are used by Jews to help them in, in their worship of God. And you've done that now really well with that research. A good outcome would be if you could draw and label correctly some of the main artifacts in Judaism. Hopefully you have done that. Great if you can explain how those objects help worship of God. So how they help reflect on their belief on God. So the tefillin, for example, being at the head and the heart and the idea that God is in your head and God is also in your heart um, and uh, using some specialist key terms as well. So hopefully now you've got all of that box stuff. Before I go through our final activity with you, um, I will also say that I'm also going to put a, a potential exam in the link below. If you're one of my students, I'd like you to give that a go uh, if you have the opportunity. It will take half an hour. If you're not one of my students, you may want to do it and pass it on to your teacher for marking. That's absolutely fine. But uh, I could do with these back if you are in my school, or so should I, your teachers, should I say, if you're in my school, so it's not just pupils in my class. Um, now there is a PDF version of it, so you can print it out and write it out and then photograph it and then email it to your teacher if you want to do it old school the, you know, the way you're going to do it next year in your exam or if you'd rather there's a word version that you can type and then email in as well uh, that should take you about half an hour I know there's quite a lot in today's lesson but you'll be fine so uh, just to conclude then I know that this is taught partners activity I do it in a classroom um, but uh, I think you should pick up your phone and whatsapp this to people uh, in your group so these are the answers what might the questions be so the answer is tell it you're going to create a question that might be for example what's the uh, prayer shawl that has 613 threads and you send that to one of your friends and uh, see if they come back to you with a talent you might want to mention that you're talking about my lesson um, or else it might be quite random if you just had a whatsapp message from someone saying What's that prayer shawl with 613 threads? Seems a little bit weird, doesn't it? Anyway, uh, I'm going to leave it there for the day. Uh, I hope you're okay. Stay safe, wash hands, and the rest of it, God bless. And uh, I'll see you soon with another clip.